Hello everyone, my name is Josie Lizardo, 3ds Max Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and today I want to talk to you guys about simulation. So in extension 2 for 3ds Max 2016 that we just shipped uh, earlier this month, uh, we introduced new capabilities and new functionality that allows you guys to essentially uh, visualize Autodesk CFD content or CFD results. So I'm going to walk you guys through the process of actually generating those uh, those simulations in Autodesk CFD and then how to bring those in into Max and create some nice animations with them. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Um, this is the room uh, or the model that we're going to be using uh, to do this simulation with. And what I want to essentially simulate is air coming into the room and then exiting the room through these little inlets that we have here on the ground. So we're going to es essentially simulate uh, air circulation in this room. Um, now, the process I'm going to show you guys is a little, a little bit specific to Max in the sense of how we're bringing uh, geometry into CFD. If you were bringing geometry in from, let's say, Revit or AutoCAD, the process would be a little bit different or a little bit more streamlined, I would say. Uh, but because uh, we're starting off from Max, we need to take into account a few different, uh, a few little things. And that's essentially that this model is way too complex to send into uh, CFD right now. The export process out of Max would take a little bit too long, and then generating the results in CFD would, would probably be uh, too long as well. Uh, so what I went ahead and did, what I recommend doing, is actually generating or creating a much uh, more simplified version of uh, your room. So in this case here, I'm going to turn on my edges to show you guys. This is essentially just a bunch of boxes that I put together to essentially represent the cabinets, the island, and the major sort of collision objects or or collision surfaces uh, that are important in this room. What I also went ahead and did is uh, modeled uh, an area where the air would actually come through. So this vent here that you see on the roof. And on the ground, I have uh, similar surfaces uh, that we're going to define as um, air exiting the room. And I've also modeled um, this room um, where I've defined essentially the walls as being one volume and I also have an interior volume that was modeled to define where the air is actually going to exist in the room. So there's two sort of rooms sitting uh, one on top of the other and those will be defined in uh, Autodesk CFD appropriately. So once I've uh, modeled uh, my low res version of the room I would say I'm ready to send this over into um, CFD. Alright so um, I'm going to come to the export uh, window here. I'm going to say export selected with my object uh, selected there. And I'm going to come into my libraries here. I have a folder that I have set up and I'm going to call this kitchen. I'm going to save it as an IGES file. You could also use SAT for this process. I haven't tested SAT, so I don't know what the caveats would be. But I know that with IGES it works quite well, so I'm going to hit save. And then the scene is now exported into the IGES file. And now I can come into CFD and start off my project. So here is Autodesk CFD. I'm going to come to new here. And we're going to browse to that file that we just saved. Um, it's already pointed to that right location. So we're going to select this IGES file here. We're going to give this uh, a name. So we're going to call this uh, Kitchen Study. And we're going to say Create. Give it a couple of seconds, and uh, the file and the project will be created. All right, so our project has been generated, and you see that my kitchen is inside of my CFD view here. And so I'm going to go through the process of setting this up to generate a simulation of airflow. So if I'm under the Setup tab, I see that I have essentially a wizard-like uh, presentation of the different uh, things I need to define. So we're going to define our materials, then we're going to define our boundary conditions, then we're going to move on to some meshing, and then we're going to solve this uh, this simulation. So the first thing to do is define the material. So um, I'm going to click on the outer box or the outer shell. And when it turns red, it means that it's selected uh, just by hitting the left click. And I'm going to come to right click and go to edit. There's a few different ways of getting to the edit menu. I prefer the right click way. And here we're going to define this particular uh, volume as a, um, a solid type, and we're going to give it uh, gypsum board. You know, it could be whatever you want it to be, but in this case here, we're going to just leave it pretty simple at gypsum board. We're going to hit apply. And then what I'm going to do is hide this volume by con holding the control key and middle mouse button clicking on this volume. It's essentially going to hide 
uh, that volume. And now we have the interior volume that I mentioned earlier that I also modeled in Max to represent um, the air uh, volume itself. So again, with this volume selected, and notice, by the way, that I'm set to uh, volume here. I could be set to surface. This is just how you're selecting and picking uh, different components of your, of your model. Um, and it helps, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to be in volume or you might want to be in surface. In this case here, I know I want to be in volume, so I'm going to leave it at volume. Uh, so with this volume now selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit. And I'm going to leave it as uh, fluid and air. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm again going to right I'm going to hide this uh, volume by control um, middle mouse button clicking to, uh, to hide this volume out of view. There we go. And then uh, we have every other surface in the scene, so uh, every other volume that's in this particular project. In this case here, to keep things simple, I'm going to select the entire thing. Everything is red. And I'm going to define these again as being uh, solids, gypsum boards, uh, just to keep things simple. To bring back everything into view, I can repeat the same process uh, to hide them, but I'll do it in an empty space in the scene. And now everything comes back. All right. So the next uh, step in the process is to define some boundary conditions. Basically, um, in my particular simulation, where is air coming in and where is air uh, exiting the room? Uh, so notice that when I switch to boundary conditions, it automatically set my selection to surface uh, because it assumes that I want to select surfaces and it's uh, correct. This is what I want to do. I want to select this particular surface here. It's red. And I want to define this guy as uh, being uh, having uh, being set to velocity and we just need to give this a value right now I'm set to meters so I'm gonna keep this uh, pretty low at maybe two meters per second uh, you know this is probably a little bit high but whatever for the for the for the purpose of this demonstration I think it's it's okay we're gonna hit apply and then I'm gonna go ahead and hide some surfaces so that I can reach the lower parts of the model so I'm gonna hide these two here and I want to select these little inlets here and turn these into sort of exiting uh, exiting surfaces. So I'm going to click on one, uh, click on the other to add to that selection. And by the way, adding and removing from selections in CFD is just uh, so to add to a selection, just click, no, no alt click or no control click, just click on the surfaces. And when they are red, you know that they are uh, selected. So with these uh, surfaces selected, I'm going to edit and I'm going to set these to pressure with zero Pascal. I'm going to apply. And now I'm pretty much ready to move on from boundary conditions. In this case, uh, in this example, this is all I needed to do. Uh, the next step requires meshing. So we're going to go to the mesh uh, sizing um, tab there. And this is an automatic process, right? So I'm just going to hit the auto size and it does it for me. And if I come into transparency mode, I can actually see how it was meshed if I wanted to. So this is how the meshing occurred. So I'm going to come back to shaded. And now I'm ready to solve. So I'm going to hit the solve button here. This dialog appears. I need to make sure that my physics, uh, on the, under the physics tab, my flow is enabled. If I come back to control, um, I need to define essentially how many iterations to run this. I was told, and I, from what I've read, that a value of 3, 350 makes sense. To keep things simple, quick, and fast, I'm going to uh, lower this down to about 20 uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm simply going to hit the solve button and let that um, calculate. All right, so now that my CFD simulation is complete, there's a few different things that I can do or different ways I can actually visualize this in CFD directly. So if I come to the planes under the results um, ribbon here, if I come to the planes tab, <coughs> I can add a plane. And uh, what I can do now is maybe just rotate this guy so he's positioned in, slightly in, a, in, a, in a way that makes a bit more sense. And then I can add some trace points here. So I'm going to come to the traces button here. And there's different ways of adding trace points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say a rectangular grid here. And I'm going to use a grid equal grid spacing of, of four rows. And I'm going to simply hit the Add Trace Set, give it a couple of seconds, and I can close this dialog out. And now we can see uh, the path of our air uh, flowing through this room. All right, so this is what we're going to send over into 3ds Max and use these results to actually do some nice um, animated visualizations. So to send this over into Max or to generate something that Max can actually consume, I need to come to uh, export here and I'm going to say export nodal results. That's pretty much it. It takes a couple of seconds uh, to export a CSV file that we can now bring inside of Max and um, visualize with. So in the next video, we're going to look at that particular process um, to generate some nice, uh, nice visuals. Thanks.